Hello everybody and welcome to another Blender tutorial. This time I will show you how to create this effect of filling some geometry with, with curve. And of course procedurally or computed uh, updated each frame so it can deform or update with deformed mesh or animated mesh. Uh, and the effect that we will get is something like this and uh, the final uh, product is actually just a curve so you can use it as any other curve in blender so you can run some objects along the path or do whatever you want with it okay let's stop this this should be actually a pretty short tutorial so jump right into the blender and first of all uh, this tutorial will work only with the add-on for blender that's called uh, animation nodes and because i am not exactly aiming this tutorial for beginners is definitely for at least intermediate users i will not go uh, to details how to install it, where to find it, if you go to Google and just Google uh, animation nodes, here it is, you can activate it and you will get the necessary stuff that we will use uh, in this tutorial. Okay, we want to fill some mesh geometry with curve, so of, uh, of course we need some mesh geometry. For example, sphere, it's pretty much the simplest shape for this to happen and we will work with insides of the uh, sphere so I would like to see inside but don't have uh, necessarily a wireframe view here so I will go to the round cube display and set this to wire so I can see actually inside what's happening there and I, I could be on the first frame it doesn't really matter here okay uh, for our curve uh, in the inside we need some points where we will generate the curve and those points should somehow automatically fill the space so we don't have to uh, care about the shape of this object and the best way I found is just create particle systems so new particle system we don't want it to move uh, but maybe it will create some pretty nice effect but for this I want to have pretty much all the control over the points so scroll down to the physics and set it to no physics no motion there will be just particles and I see only one here and that's because uh, the particles are generated all in one frame they are in several frames here in from one and uh, to 200 frames so just set this to zero and now we have all the particles here and also if we want to use it uh, with the animation we need to make sure that the lifetime of these particles is longer than uh, the length of the animation so some arbitrary huge value why not okay where we want to create them uh, that depends where we want the curve to uh, appear. Uh, it could uh, fill the insides of this shape or it can be on the surface like it's now uh, emitted from faces so the curve will be actually on the, only on the surface. We want to fill the volume so set this volume and uh, the curve will uh, actually shoot some random uh, uh, geometry outside of this uh, because it will go from point to point and if the points are really random so it will go from this to this and back and forward it will generate not exactly this shape but uh, pretty much anything will uh, look like a sphere uh, after a while so just uncheck this random value uh, it doesn't really change the position of the points but the uh, way they are generated is actually changed 
you, you will see it after the curve will appear. Okay, and that's pretty much all for this. We maybe don't need so much points. Let's see some really few so we will see the effect. And now let's go to the animation nodes. So I will change this to node editor. Here I am already in animation nodes. I create new node tree and make sure the animation nodes aren't execute always. It's uh, heavy for the system, so not always, but every time something change frame or some value, some property, whatever. Okay, first we need the position of these particles. So shift A, and let's find out particles, get particles. Mm, no, this won't be helpful. What's another we have here? Particles from object. Yes, this is much better. Uh, we will just find this object, this round cube. It's actually our sphere. And here we have all particles inside the sphere. That means uh, really all of them. So if I have more particle systems here, uh, it will get all of them. So some information of these particles. Let's run here, particles locations. And now we want to use these locations to generate some new curve. Okay, where is curve? No, not F curve, but spline. And here we have create from points. Okay, now we created spline from points. We don't see anything. We have to use this spline to actually create object from this spline. So again, spline and where it is, object output. Here we have, uh, we need to have some object where we uh, can put our spline. We don't have one, so we will hit this plus sign. So we had new curve target, which is for now empty. So there is nothing here. And we will just connect this spline to splines. Uh, it can get more than one, so uh, it will pick it will create a list from just one spline. Okay, we have the spline here. I don't see anything. Yes, because we have to activate this. Okay, spline is generated. It's generated inside the sphere. That's good. Everything works uh, as expected. Uh, we want to see it, so we will have to um, make uh, to create some thickness for the spline. So bevel depth. Uh, for example, right here, 0 0.03, but it's not exactly smooth. It's actually straight lines from point to point. But animation nodes have really nice node for Bezier curves. Here it is, smooth Bezier. Place it right here, and now the smoothness is there. Okay, we can control this. Uh, 0.3 something is probably the best value for this and as you can see it's not exactly a lot of uh, it's not filled it's really see-through okay I can activate the always for now and play with the particle systems uh, one thing I can do is make it to back to faces okay we will have it only on faces with more particles like 10 times more, we start to get uh, some filling, like it's uh, knitted or making made from rope. But we actually want them to be inside, so back to the volume uh, and make much more of them, like 3000. Okay, it starts to work. Uh, also, uh, I don't want to uh, place any, any subdivision surface or anything on this. So right here, I will also increase bevel resolution to two or three. So it's nice and smooth. Uh, get rid of the round cube and we have the sphere filled with curve. And of course, it should work with 
the animation. So let's just see if it actually works. So delete all of this. And I imported FBX of this dancing man. So I will move it to some other layer. Uh, if I play the animation uh, here, you can see he is dancing. It's a uh, motion capture from uh, mixamo.com. Uh, the, in the description will be link to that site. Uh, I didn't edit it at all. I will just use this mesh and try to, uh, from this animation node, recreate the fling with curve. Okay, first of all, wireframe so I can see inside. Create particle systems. Uh, we will need a lot of them. Start and end to zero. Volume, not random. Uh, velocity doesn't really matter, but should be zero. Uh, otherwise, the particles can be created outside of the surface. Uh, and physics, no. Okay. Where are the particles? Don't render emitter. Why don't I see them? What's wrong? Oh, I found it. Uh, the lifetime, of course, should be some arbitrary huge value because we are already uh, already on frame 53 and the lifetime was only 50. Okay, go back to the first pose. And if you look just to the particles and play the animation, you should see that they are uh, they are they are keeping their position relative to the mesh. So if I place only render, you can see the particles are moving with the mesh. It could be nice effect too, but we want our curve to be there. So stop the animation. Uh, object is alpha sur surface for now. There are the particles and we create new target. Okay. Where is the target now? Why is everything broken? Oh, of course, uh, auto execution. Uh, it could be bevel depth 0.01, for example. And you can see that some connections are actually outside of the mesh. They are uh, coming from random parts of the, uh, from the mesh, from the particle to particle. You can control it somehow with a seed just play with it until you get something that you are happy with uh, you will probably uh, don't get the exact result you want so just go with something that looks interesting uh, for this detailed mesh the smoothness could, could be actually lower or maybe not it looked better before and if the auto execution is set to always uh, the curve will regenerate in every frame of course uh, the frame changing here is not enough because uh, the animation nodes uh, will be uh, behind one frame always so uh, if the rest of the animation is on the frame uh, 5, uh, the animation nodes will regenerate the frame 4. So uh, you will have to check this always button and it will regenerate uh, as you can expect. And voila, it works as expected. And as I promised, of course, this is just a curve. So if I turn off the animation nodes, I can do with the curve whatever I want. It doesn't have to have depth and I can uh, put some object on the curve. So modifier curve, use it as any curve 
I would do and move it. It's really weird, but it works as expected. And it could be nice effect too. Okay, this should be enough. It's already longer than I expected. Uh, I hope you find it kind of useful. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them, in, leave them in the comments, of course. And it's all from me. So, till the next time, bye.